maybe zoom in a little bit. Hi, this is uh, Neil O'Connor and it's Thursday morning. We're just getting ready for the lecture on capital budgeting. So the last four or five weeks in Management Accounting 2, we've focused mostly on allocation of costs and we also looked at the um, customer profitability analysis. We've looked at value engineering and understanding how firms can actually improve their internal operations in order to cut costs. So this week is we're going to take a little bit of a uh, jump into the area of some people would say it's a corporate financing thing but we will actually look at the area of capital budgeting and capital budgeting basically if we look at the structure of the firm we have for a publicly listed firm we have um, shareholders and they would invest money dollars into a firm and the firm in some ways is going to convert that investment into returns and the firm will actually earn profits, retain profits over time, that is money that is uh, retained inside the firm and not passed back to shareholders in the form of dividends and then over time they're going to accumulate cash. And the big question is what does a firm do with that cash? And many of us know with Apple they have a huge stockpile of cash and people keep on saying pay a dividend, pay a dividend, pay a dividend. They haven't uh, decided to do that yet. But the big question is with that cash the firm may decide to reinvest that back in terms of in terms of capital equipment or they may term may choose to pay that cash in terms of a dividend. So we assume that this cash going back into the firm is being invested into assets which are longer life than 12 months so we call them uh, they would call them fixed assets and they will go onto the following balance sheet over here in terms of assets we have the liabilities and equity on this side and we're focusing on decisions that are made, economic decisions that are made by the firm to choose, okay, if we're going to invest in capital equipment or capital assets of the firm, we want to know will we get greater benefits from that investment? Or the other reasonable a similar question is if we go invest in capital equipment of the firm are there various alternatives to that investment and we basically want to make a decision that focuses on the long-term investment of the firm in its capital equipment in and so we can actually redraw that and think about the capital budgeting decision in terms of a cost benefit analysis and that's what we're going to talk about today we're just really looking at cost benefit analysis that we learnt in management accounting one and we regurgitated in the start of management accounting two we're looking at the cost benefit analysis associated with uh, relevant decision making in management accounting one now we're looking at cost benefit analysis with respect to economic decisions associated with in long-term investments which may be plant and equipment that a firm invests in. And so what we're interested in is looking at because we're considering investment over time we're interested in the present value of the benefits of an investment versus the present value of the costs of an investment and we just want to know if we go ahead with a particular alternative investment, a particular investment, are the present value of the benefits greater than the present value of the costs? And that is not always clear at first glance because of one, time value of money. And we're going to cover in detail how we use time value of money to actually work out the net present value of the benefits and costs 
of a particular investment alternative. Other considerations are is we may just want to compare one alternative, one alternative versus another. So both alternatives may have positive net present value, that is, their present value of the benefits is greater than the present value of costs. But we want to choose the one that has the highest present value of benefits minus the present value of the costs. So that's basically the background of capital budgeting. It comes from the fact that the firm needs to invest in the future in equipment and that investment goes onto the asset side of the balance sheet and because we're looking at a long period of time over which we're making this decision we want to consider the time value of money so ultimately it's a cost of benefit analysis but we need to co in calculating the cost benefit we need to calculate the present value of the benefits and the present value of the costs having said that we have several approaches that we can take in capital budgeting and that's under the methods that I will go through in the lecture. And the main two, two types of methods, there are the methods that take into account the time value, time value of money and the methods that just consider the accounting the accounting values attributed to each alternative. Now under the time value of money we're going to look at a net present value method of calculation where we're actually given the outflow and given the present value of the future inflows we want to find out currently if we adjust the future value of those inflows for time value of money, do we get a net present value of greater than zero or less than zero? A variation of that is the internal rate of return where we actually find out what discount factor do we have to use on our future inflows, cash inflows, in order to make the net present value equal to zero. And so that's a, a way of working out if you were to give me money today and I were to invest it at 10% for the next 10 years, then we could actually work out that investment return, go backwards and the internal rate of return will come back at 10% if the investment was 10%. So we were just interested in the the rate of return of future returns that uh, comes back into the firm. We're just interested in what is the actual um, discounted value or the discount percentage we have to use to bring the, the future, uh, future returns back to zero in the net present value calculation. The non-time value of money considerations are accounting values, that is accounting rate of return which just considers the accounting profits associated with the investment alternative and another method is basically payback which basically is the investment investment divided by the time or the total sorry basically it is the uh, total number of years it takes for the future returns to add up to the initial investment and so in many cases a lot of companies are looking for three or four years of payback anything beyond that they get concerned about uh, the risks and the returns associated with the investment so there we have it that's the lecture today we, uh, capital budgeting is very, very important because it's related to the corporate finance, it's related, related to the firm's economic decisions it makes for the long term. And because it's the long term, we need to bring in some time value of money considerations because a dollar today is worth much more than a dollar in the future. 
Then we had a look at the various methods uh, that we're going to cover. Some are time value calculation methods and, num and others are non-time value uh, calculation methods. And that's basically capital budgeting. So see you in the lecture. Thank you.